Well, hey, we were back on the air, and I this is our last know. segment of doing we're reviews. We We've had uh, the other guys at the Expendables with Percy, yes. Inception with Drew Colbert, uh, Lance, and also uh, having done a review of this film, Kick Ass, um, Brooke Fox, and they like to give it four out of five palmettos. You guys like yeah. it? I'll have to get this. Yes. Uh, five out of five for Inception, two out of five for the other guys. Uh, let's see. And you had, what, four out of five? No, three out of five for Expendables. All right, the one I want to cover for you right now is an IMAX. You get four? Four, for four out of five for Expendables. Yes. Uh, one of the things, that, and Brooke, you'll appreciate this, because, and Drew, y'all will we'll all appreciate this. I took Snodgrass to the movies. Cool. We went to the IMAX theater to see something in 3D. Piranha? Now, I can tell you right now, I didn't take her to see Piranha. <laughs> Uh, God, I'd, there'd be a special pit in hell for me if I took Snodgrass to see Piranha. Movies like Piranha. Go ahead, I'll, I'll tell you. All right. So anyway, uh, we went to see Hubble 3D, which was a con which was a cooperative effort by NASA and the IMAX theater people. But they took IMAX film and everything up on the last space shuttle to service the hub Hubble, and they they take you on this whole incredible journey. It's just unbelievable. It's breathtaking, absolutely cool. breathtaking. And mixed in with it are these unbelievably spectacular images mm -hmm. that the Hubble's a catcher. Stuff I haven't seen posted on the wow. internet or anything. Just taking it to like the, the crab nebula, the horseshoe nebula, the pillars of creation. I mean, it's just, it was just awe-inspiring. I mean, you'd think, I mean, I, I can't begin to tell you the power of the imagery this stuff has over you. And Snodgrass absolutely loved it. It was absolutely moving. It was emotionally moving, this thing. If you have not seen Hubble 3D, you should really go see it. And you're not going there for acting. You're not going there for dialogue. This is something real. And it just, you know, sometimes you just need to see something so much greater than yourself that you just shut the hell up and you just let yourself be overwhelmed by the awe that you. It was mur it was murder. <laughs> it was murder. <laughs> but I don't believe how you know these are real Hubble said. photographs. Yeah. But they could have faked it. Yeah. They could have faked it. If they faked it, how they, about the I, shadows? The animated, Which way did the shadows come? Over there, yeah. right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, that's that's right. There was wind blowing up there around the Hubble and no, everything. No, I saw the that little wind flapping. The Mythbusters, they, they busted all, all that stuff is true. That you need to watch oh, yeah. the Mythbusters. Oh, yeah. I love Mythbusters. But uh, I cannot recommend more highly that you go see Hubble 3D in an IMAX theater. Uh, and everybody here, you really should go. I would love to go back and see it again. It is just one of the most stirring things you've ever seen in your life. Five out of five palmettos for this thing. Cool. And I'm very grateful to the people at NASA for this. And let me tell you, I was a huge NASA fan as a kid growing up. I'm saying they could do no wrong. I said, give them all the money they want. I want to go to Mars. And it just kind of rejuvenates that in you. He said, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go. Let's do some more of this stuff. But actually, at this point, since I have to pay taxes, but let's do it without people. <laughs> you know? It's a lot cheaper just to send the probe. Just bring me the pictures. So I'll be happy with the pictures. Did the Muslims like their new movie? Oh, that <laughs> no. Yeah, they all had to stop and 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 uh, and, uh, and face east when uh, when the weather called out. Kind of hard out. to tell which way east is when you're in the horseshoe <laughs> yeah. nebula. That's right. Well, they're just kind of yeah, looking that looking down. You know, that's yeah, in the direction. In the directions. Yeah. The last movie I'm going to read. Last. Uh, oh God, this is all. <laughs> you need to speak up, you know, because people are why are they whispering? Guys floating around in space in robes. The Iranian know. space shuttle has tassels on it. <laughs> it's a there's a, there's a tent. <laughs> you got a tent floating out of <laughs> <and> orbiting <laughs> the Earth. The end of it, the rocket looks yeah. like a minaret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a minaret on the top That's of the right. rocket. They got a they camel they carrying they oxygen they tanks. They call that thing the Yes. Yeah, they, they have a missile, the Ambassador of so Death. The reason they call it that is because they've ever let one of those loose, loose, they have no idea where the hell it's going to come down. Right. It's like a Scud missile. You just shove it in the, you shove it in the camel's mouth and then hit the camel in the balls with a sledgehammer, and they just switch <laughs> where he's going. That's where the missile's going to go. And you All right. uh, turn on CNN to find out where it lands. All right, Piranha in 3D. So let me ask you this. What do Glitter, Ishtar, Bruno, Piranha 3D, and Deep Throat all have in common? They all suck. Oh, oh, yeah, got it. I had the honor of having a fan of the show well, attend Piranha in 3D with me. Who? Uh, A.N. Got it. I know it was Albert, but A.N. came uh, at my urging. In the middle of the film, I turned to him and queried, this is the last movie you're ever going to go see with me, isn't it? And he didn't deny it. Remember, when the thing was over, he says, if you ever call me again, I will go, but you're paying for the tickets, and if I don't like it, I'm not giving you the money. 
In this movie, a school of ravenous prehistoric flesh-eating piranhas escape an underground lake after an earthquake. How they survive for two million years by eating each other. Hmm. Sounds like a Madonna party. Totally plausible. That's right. They begin to devour. They begin to devour everybody in the water in a matter so gruesome, so gory, so vile. It staggers the imagination. Now, I was prepared for the onslaught. I really thought, after all, there was nothing left that they could put in a movie that I mean that would possibly it shock me. After all. Oh God! Oh, oh just, <laughs> it was. I, mean, I saw The Exorcist and Bruno. How could there possibly be anything so offensive uh, that I could? I couldn't have been more wrong. Could not have been more wrong. Jerry O'Connell is a comedic actor whose work I've enjoyed in the past. He did some movie about some cockroaches or Joe's apartment. Yes. That. He's also he the, the fat kid in Stand By Me. Was he the fact that Stanley? He's got quite a list of credits too. Well, yes, actually, you know, I've li I've liked the stuff that he's Lots done. Not this. In this film, he was terrible. I know the writing was bad. I know he's supposed to be playing a reprehensible, reprehensible character. He was terrible even at that. This is a guy I could tell who did not have his heart in this film. Probably once he realized he had committed to this and finally read the dialogues he was going to be forced to read. He was terrible. Um, he wasn't even good at this. Now, they had some significant actors. They had Ving Rhames. They had Richard Dreyfus. I love Ving Rhames. love Ving Rhames. I think he's a very good actor. Richard Dreyfus goes without saying. Uh, you would think they would find a way to feature these two accomplished actors. Well, you would be wrong. The writing is bad, the characters are undeveloped, and they're unsympathetic. The only sympathy I had was for the fish, and they were CGI. The scene in the opening, they were going to go tongue-in-cheek, because they had, it opens up with, um, with, um, it, yeah, they're going to lose their, yeah, well, they will lose their tongues, they had a few other things, too. Tongue-in-cheek, um, the prison experience. It opens with Richard Dreyfus, and I must admit, there was, it's, it's a very, it's a, I'm going, okay, I understand where they're going with this. This should be pretty amusing. Because he's sitting on this lake fishing and his radio's playing that song that he and Robert Shaw and, and were, yes, to, uh, were playing on the radio while he's fishing. So I said, okay, okay, I get it. So they're going to make a stab at dark humor. This might be very funny. That was the only stab they made at it. Well, that's not true. They made other stabs, but this was the only one that hit. Wow. The rest of them just couldn't have missed more. It wasn't funny. It was just grotesque beyond your imagination. As a comedy, it fails miserably. The only good thing about this movie... Was it billed as a comedy? Um, the, it's, it's billed as a horror movie, but the way they do the, the promos and stuff, you can take a look and say, okay, this is supposed to be tongue-in-cheek. It's supposed a little to be bit. like arachnophobia, where you're supposed to laugh. Yeah, and laugh and be scared at the same time. Even though it's kind of frightening. You just want to... You're, you're not even... The, the I, scared, you, I mean, you throw... Oh, wow. you know, but there's a it's few true. places in there where all of a sudden I mean, you will jump. I mean, there's just a couple where you will jump. Yeah. So what? Wolfman did that and did it beautifully. That was a wonderful film. This Wolfman film, this good. movie is just... Yeah, Wolfman was good. This is just terrible. There's only two good things I can say about this movie. Richard Dreyfus, being the sanctimonious SOB he is, finally gets his, which he should have gotten in Jaws. Awesome. And the other thing is that Roman Polanski got no money from this movie. Good. Now, I know Roman Polanski had... <laughs> I know Roman Polanski had nothing to do with the making of this film, but I now know what his 13-year-old victim felt like in the hot tub. Boom, boom. Oh, my God. Al-Qaeda... on Al-Qaeda thinks we are a decadent, immoral, self-indulgent, and corrupt society. Mm -hmm. And after watching Piranha in 3D, I'm prepared to concede the point. <laughs> do not see this film. If, you're being a if you bring a child, you ought to be taken out and publicly horsewhipped. It is rated R. Stone, yeah, send him to Afghanistan to be stoned. Can't be public no palmettos for this film at all. You. No palmettos. But I will give it a frond for two reasons. For killing Richard Dreyfus. For killing Richard Dreyfus, and nothing sucks more than Bruno. <laughs> yeah, that's and that's my review <laughs> of Piranha 3D. Of Avatar. Of Avatar. Avatar. That's right. We don't. We'll be right back with COVIDradio.com.